Welcome back to Cosmoholics Anonymous. I am your favorite new mama bougie vintage and today's video is a pregnancy update. My lighting's a little messed up. Today is Wednesday, April... April? Girl, no. <laughs> Today is Wednesday, May 1st and I am officially 40 weeks today. So this is my official due date. When you're initially given a due date, it's like a give or take. It's like an estimation of when you might have your baby. And you can either have your baby before your due date or after your due date, and this is within a two week time frame. So basically, when you're given your due date based on your last period, you can have your baby either two weeks before or two weeks after. It all depends on your body and your placenta and how things are going with the baby. Now, I have a pretty healthy baby and she and her placenta are doing great. So when I was talking to my midwife, she was basically explaining like, if the baby doesn't come within the next few days, we're gonna see about having you in for another appointment next week and that's when we would kind of induce you otherwise just hang tight and so I was like ah, I'm not going to know damn 41 weeks okay we're not doing that it's, it's 40 weeks or it's nothing okay today I had an appointment and thankfully I was able to get a sweep done if you're unfamiliar with what a sweep is is basically when your doctor goes in to the birth canal <laughs> and they stretch your cervix with their fingers and so today I found out that I'm actually two centimeters dilated and she was able to stretch my cervix a little bit more to hopefully get the ball rolling now a sweep doesn't always work you can get a sweep and it does nothing for you and usually if it's going to do something for you it's within a 72 hour time frame I believe but do not quote me on that I did have a sweep done with my first pregnancy but the thing was that because I was leaking fluid and didn't really know and kind of just thought I was leaking fluid and then I didn't really do anything about it. Salem actually could have been born uh, on the 5th rather than on the 7th because I had the sweep done on the 4th and then I was leaking a little bit of fluid, wasn't really sure, so I just left it alone after Googling a bit. And then on the 6th, I realized I was leaking again and it was really late night and we decided to go to the hospital and so late night on the 6th we went to the hospital and then the 7th she was born. Of course with my first pregnancy they did induce me so um and they had to induce me because I was GBS positive. GBS is group B strep which reminds me I'm gonna show you guys something <laughs> but group B strep it's uh, found in either your vagina or your rectum and it's just like a I guess a bacteria in a sense and so I tested positive for it with Salem so with my first pregnancy I tested negative and then with the second test I tested positive so because I tested positive and I was leaking fluid, that put myself and the baby at risk, which meant I needed to get antibiotics, and that's why they induced me, so they could get the antibiotics going and blah, blah, blah. With this pregnancy, I'm also GBS positive. Um, and I talked about it in my midwife versus OB video where I was gonna have to do the swab myself, and so I wanna show you guys the swab that I had to do <laughs> on my own in the damn bathroom. So basically, this is the thing that you need <laughs> to do the swab for GBS. It's a really long Q-tip, okay? And basically, you take the Q-tip, you swab the walls of your JJ, and then you slide it against your basically gooch. I don't know if it's a gooch for women. <laughs> uh, your perineum. <laughs> you, you, sw you slide it there, and then you put it in your butthole. <laughs> And so obviously I was like, I'm not trying to do this. Like when I had OB, they did it for me. But then once you do that with the Q-tip that's in here, you then pop open this thing. Okay. You pop that open and then you put it inside there and there's like this gel stuff to like preserve it. And then they go and send it for testing. So I had to do that myself. I didn't want to do it myself, but I did it myself. And um it came back positive so obviously I did it properly yay me so again because I had a sweep done today if for whatever reason I start leaking any fluid or anything like that or if I suspect that I'm leaking fluid and I go get checked 
then they're going to end up starting the induction process so they can get my antibiotics going and everything like that. What my midwife had explained to me at my last appointment before today, if my labor is progressing too quickly and too swiftly for me to get administered the antibiotics before I actually give birth, then at that point, they would keep me 24 hours in the hospital. For whatever reason, when you have a midwife, they only want to keep you for three hours and then you get to do the recovery at home and your midwife will come to your house and do the, the home care there and take care of you there. It's basically the same as staying in the hospital except you're in the comfort of your own home and you don't have to worry about like paying for parking and stuff. <laughs> So I prefer to stay in the hospital 24 hours because I feel like you kind of just relax and the nurses come in and do all the checks and stuff for you with the baby, but I think it's going to be fine. This is not my first time being a mom, and that's why I feel like if you are having a baby for the first time, midwifery might not be for you because... When you're a first time mom, you're kind of scared about everything and like you, there's so much you don't know. Okay, so my baby at 40 weeks, this is the bump app. You guys are always asking what app I'm using. The baby's as big as a damn watermelon. Would you like to push a watermelon out of your hoo-ha? Probably freaking not. But it's 51.2 centimeters and 3.4 kilograms. Today at the midwife, I asked like how much she thinks my baby might weigh and she said probably around eight pounds, which I'm not trying to go past 8 pounds because Salem was 8.5, so <sighs> we'll see when we cross that bridge. Um, oh, and since I've had the sweep done, I'm definitely feeling a little bit of cramping and stuff. Baby's moving around quite a bit and obviously getting ready to come out. So at this point, she's continuing to grow um, her hair and her nails. Her lungs are still developing as well, but they are they're pretty good, okay? <laughs> At this point, the average fetus is about 6.2 to 9.2 pounds and measures about 18.9 to 20.19 inches. But you really don't know how big your baby's gonna be until the baby gets here. So I have been doing quite a bit of nesting. It's supposed to help like make the baby come. And so my vanity was in a freaking shambles. And so my mom was over here helping me kind of organize it. And then we switched around the bedrooms and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. So I think that's helped to get me to the two centimeters. <laughs> but we're hoping that she comes within the next two days at, since I had the sweep done. I'm not really trying to do a second sweep. I know a lot of people get their membranes swept more than once, but I don't really care to do that. Um, it's not painful. It is a little uncomfortable, but... To me, it's freaking worth it if it's going to get the baby to come out. And especially at this point in your pregnancy when you're over it and you're a little desperate, you might try to go to like desperate measures to have the baby, but you have to do your proper research. Like a lot of people in my first pregnancy were suggesting castor oil to me, and I'm like, are you guys freaking crazy? Castor oil is not a good way to induce your own labor. Do not try that. <laughs> Do your research and find other ways. I was drinking lots of red raspberry leaf tea. I actually still have some. I'm going to try and drink some today. It's supposed to help prepare the uterus and soften the cervix a little bit. You can have sex to freaking soften your cervix. But there's lots of methods that you can use. But either way, you could do all the methods in the world. If the baby's not ready to come out, they just will not come out. So it's kind of like everything's an old wives tale. Breast buds are now visible on your little baby. With baby do any moment, don't be alarmed if he or she comes out a little cone headed. <laughs> uh, that's basically the pressure from the vagina. Remember, the skull bones haven't fused yet, so baby can fit through the birth canal. While baby hasn't been changing that much in these last weeks, his or her brain is still growing like crazy and will continue to for the first three years of life. And then my body, I can tell you all about my body, I don't really need to look at this. My vagina is swollen, it looks completely different than it looked before. Like I didn't even want the midwife to look at my coochie because I was like, this looks like a porn star's vagina and I'm not interested in it at all. <laughs> Your body changes a lot during pregnancy. The stretch marks, I've kind of, sort of avoided just a little bit. They're creeping up and that's part of the reason why I want to get the baby out because I don't want to go to 41 weeks and for whatever reason, the stretch marks are just crazy and take longer to fade. That is not something I'm interested in. I know it's vain, but I don't give a fuck. <laughs> also, I just want to meet my daughter. Like, where is she at? I don't understand why she's trying to take all this sweet, precious time doing the most. Let's have a toast. Like, no, she needs to get out. Eviction notice has been served. 
it's time to go to court. If baby still hasn't made her arrival, not to worry, they will soon. You may feel uncomfortable, but late term is considered 41 weeks and zero days to 41 weeks and six days. And so as long as your placenta is working, your baby can stay in there for a long time. And that's what my midwife explained to me today. She said, as long as the placenta's good and your baby's still very active, you can stay pregnant for a while. It's not until your placenta starts uh, not working and your baby starts slowing down with movement and it's not accelerating that's when it's a cause for concern and a lot of times your baby and you might start to get dehydrated and then um when the baby comes out they're all dry and flaky and stuff if you reach 41 weeks your ob will likely give you a non-stress test or a biophysical profile to make sure your baby is doing okay in the womb and if you don't go into labor by 42 weeks your doctor will likely recommend in, uh, inducing birth to make sure you and baby are healthy. You won't feel it, but your cervix is opening and thinning out in, pre in preparation for delivering baby. The cervix will continue to dilate and efface all the way until labor day. The other day when I ended up packing my suitcase because baby B tricked me, <laughs> um, I packed the suitcase and so that's obviously off the bucket list now. It was kind of like a scare into packing me um, or a scare into me packing the suitcase <sighs> because that day I thought I was going into labor. What ended up happening was I went to the birthing center instead of the hospital and they basically did a check on me. And so I was really hoping that was the day, okay? I was really, really hoping <laughs> that was the day because I thought that I was leaking. Like, I thought I smelled amniotic fluid on my drawers. So, um... It just had reminded me of the last time, and so because I was GBS positive, I was like, okay, I gotta go. So I ended up going to the birthing center, and uh, she did a speculum, or she used the speculum to check out what was going on inside. She did a little swab thing, and then she put like this liquid on it, and tested to see if it would turn blue or black or whatever, and it didn't, and so... Um, that meant that I was not leaking any fluid and she said by the looks of it my cervix was pretty much closed at that point and so I was really discouraged and frustrated because obviously I wanted to get the baby out but um, it wasn't the end of the world obviously <laughs> I just lived with it I also learned that because I have a midwife this time I can't just show up at the hospital which was a little irritating to me because I, originally, I was just going to go to the hospital, let them check me, and then call my midwife to say, hey, I'm in labor. But it doesn't work like that. If you have a midwife, then you have to contact your midwife first before going to the hospital because they will not see you, apparently, even if you have your pre-admin done. And I thought that was strange, but that's just the way it goes. So luckily, because I was following protocol, I didn't end up with that issue. I didn't like drive 20 minutes to the hospital just to find out that they can't see me. So I ended up going to the birthing center which was closer to my house anyway so it was a little bit more convenient. I mean it would have been a little inconvenient to go to the hospital for them to send me back home when it's 20 minutes away versus going to the birth center which is like less than 10. You learn something new every day and other than that I think I think we're gonna have a baby within the next couple of days and I'm really really excited. I'm in way better spirits than I have been these last few days just because it's depressing to not like I just it's really depressing to want the baby out and the baby's not coming out and you don't know what's going on or when it's gonna happen and every night you go to bed and you're like okay maybe tonight's the night and then you wake up in the morning and you're freaking limping like the walking dead to the bathroom to take a piss like I'm over the pain. I just want to get her out and, you know, meet her and stuff. So we will see what happens and I will keep you guys updated. Um, today I tried to go on Instagram live and I had to cut that shit all the way off because not even five minutes in and everybody was like, where's baby B? Like, is she here yet? The same shit that was happening last year and I was like, we're, we're not going to do this. It's fucking annoying. Like, it's actually the most annoying thing ever in the world. I hate it so much. And only uh, only a mother could relate to that and realize how annoying it is to constantly be asked, is she here yet? Is, is the baby here yet? Did you have the baby yet? Blah, 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 blah. 
no when you're when I have the baby you will know like I'm not gonna keep it a secret like you know what I mean I didn't keep Salem a secret once I had her so just let me do my thing I am placing my bets on the third or the fourth if she's born on the fourth may the fourth be with us <laughs> And uh, if she's born on the 3rd, then hey, I don't think it's going to be tonight or tomorrow, but you just never know. Okay, my cervix could be, well, if it was, if it was any further than 2 centimeters right now, if it was like 3 or 4 after the sweep, I would probably be feeling some serious contractions. Um, I have been getting contractions, but nothing too serious, and I have to follow the 511 rule, so... Um, and if you're unfamiliar with the 511 rule, I went over it in the in the last video, I believe, which is contractions for I think five minutes apart, lasting one minute each for one hour. Then you go to the hospital. So we will see what happens with baby B. But she's almost here and we are completely ready for her. It's literally a matter of my water breaking or starting to leak, and then we can uh blow this popsicle stand <laughs> so yeah um i don't think there's really anything else to tell you guys i just wanted to make another one of these it's 40 weeks why am i so pregnant videos <laughs> but yeah i love you all so much and i'll definitely see you in the next one